be here. <laughs> glory to God. Glory to God. We'll continue to gather till the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Except the church is raptured. Until then, the church will always gather. It's an instruction, it's a command. You value it, you will do it. Not only when you value it, when you know it, you will do it. Knowing is very important. Knowing is very important. Someone's going to be saying, oh, Brother Dave, why, why, why are you in a bow tie today and all those things? Today is my birthday. <laughs> I'll tell you my age. Don't worry. I'll tell you my age in a second. But I'll say something before I say that. Children of God should not be afraid to tell their age. Actually, it tells the word how much the word is doing, the word of God is doing in your life, how it's keeping you healthy and strong. I am 38 years old. Do I look it? See? That's what the word does. It nourishes you. It keeps you in that form that you ought to be. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> yes, I am 38. I am 38. Still young, very young. They say life starts at 40. So my life is yet to start, actually. <laughs> I've got a whole lot of life ahead of me. <laughs> Beautiful. Glory to God. So we've been, um, before then, just to remind ourselves that when we do these things in the house of God, let's take it seriously. Some of us have uh, pledged to support our ministry arm, which is the television chapter of the church, to keep it on air. So just to remind you, we will not chase you, but you have given your word. You see, what happens is when I tell you I'll be there and I'm not there, understand last time we realized that God has already set every code in motion, both physical and spiritual. This is why I said he's not doing anything new. When you come to fulfill, either by knowledge or not, either by consciousness or not, whether you are aware or not, it will play. It will do what it ought to do. For example, gravity is there. No one created it. Science has come to know it. Take this child who is innocent of gravity and put him on the roof. He will come down when he comes to the eve of the roof. The, in law, there is nothing like I don't know. So... When you say things and you don't live by them, you are negating the power of your words in the spiritual realm. You are not your word. Do you understand? So when you speak forth to say, I rebuke you, 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 you mean nothing in the spiritual realm because you say, I'm coming, I'm not there. You just do things anyhow. So when you pledge, you rather don't pledge it when you know you will not do it. Because what it does is it negates your potency in the spiritual realm. No one will chase you. But for you to be that heavy in the spiritual realm, when you speak, movement, angels are all over the place. Because it's all, this, 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 this guy, he doesn't mean his words. Why should you be going? Probably he doesn't want it. Do you understand? Then just, probably he doesn't want it. Oh, I want that car. He said, probably he doesn't want it. Why? Because last time he said I was going to give five pounds. Or he even said I was going to meet this brother here. He didn't go. Without even telling the brother. It negates your weight. It actually even makes the enemy to know that you, you don't mean your words. He will come after you and keep doing it until you. You see, it's as simple as that. So I'm only encouraging us. If you have done it, do. We will not chase you. We will not ask you. You won't see any of us come and say, hey, you pledged five pounds, you didn't pay it to. No, oh, we will not ask you. You have to be real to yourself as to the word of God in you. That's how it works in the kingdom of God. And that is the beauty of church. And that's the, look, when you lead God's people, and you're not humble. Nothing will humble you. I've come to realize if he humbles you more than being in the army. <laughs> because in the army, it is a must do. You have no reason. If you don't do it, there's consequences. In the kingdom of God, you might just say, I'm not doing it. And you're still there. No one questions you. I can't beat you for not coming to church. If I get angry, I'm personal. It's not personal. It's about Christ. I should be praying for you to come. I can beat you. This is the thing about Christ. And so he humbles you. You see this thing, and this person is not doing oh, God, blah, blah, blah. more credit so that you just have to still start speaking in the spirit. So I have realized that 
Leading God's people is what humbles you most, nothing else. Because he puts you in that position, you can't beat them. You can't, you, you can't be angry with them because the Lord himself is not angry with them. Why do you want to be angry with them? Why do you have to? So it puts you in that delicate position where your own faith and your own confidence on believing the Lord is tested. But we are still moving. Glory to God. So that's just, I don't know who it's for, but I guess I'm not told. But I'm led to speak it. I don't have to begin to say it's for you or no. But the word of God discerns the thoughts of the heart. You measure yourself with what is said and align. That's how it is done in the kingdom of God. Now, today, we started looking. Oh, we are not looking at all these things. <laughs> Some will say, hey, Pastor, Brother David, hey, we are not going home now. We are. We are going home in a minute. <laughs> these are not for you. <laughs> eh? They are for another day. Don't worry. I'm putting it away. Don't worry. Are you okay now? Glory to God. <laughs> Beautiful. So we are looking at the concepts of uh, sowing because it's a man of sowing. A man of God just talked about it and a few bits of uh, seed sowing and uh, special seeds and sowing for the purpose of things happening in people's life. You sowing for a desired result. So, before we recap, because so most of you were not here on Wednesdays, and I will say this, Wednesday service is not any less than Sunday service. <laughs> when we gather in the name of the Lord Jesus, it's the same power, it's the same word, it's the same potency, it's the same name. Let's give you the same value. The difference in the work of the word of God in the life of a child of God is the person, not the word. Because the word has never changed, it's the same. It's your response to the word, whether you're going to do it, believe it, or accept it. That's the difference. This is why we're all sitting in the church, and then the word of God comes through, and someone comes back with a testimony, and you are wondering, why was I in the service? Yeah, you were not there. This is why Jesus said that those that have ear, let them hear. Meaning not everybody is even listening. I pray we're listening. Amen. Glory to God. I didn't say Jesus said it. And he's the man. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. There's no other way to assess the Father. So if you have been thinking, oh yeah, I can give up on Jesus and find God, you will not. It's as simple as that. You will not. Sometimes the word of God is straight and you try to, you see, the challenge of ministering to God's people is sometimes you have a foreknowledge of somebody's situation. You have a foreknowledge of somebody's behavior and all these things. And then the Spirit is causing you to speak in that line. Do you have the courage to speak it? Then you're wondering, the enemy can't fight you with you. Like, ah, you know, you're going to preach about this sister. But it's not about that sister. It's preventing you to preach so that somebody else benefits. That's how delicate it is. This is where men of God find their source. Because someone has come to t- tell you something. You know something about someone. But the Holy Spirit is saying, speak on this thing. And then, hey, kasurei bahata. What is that person going to think? That's what it is. You have to speak it. Who do you believe? God or man? Who do you fear? God or man? Beautiful. We'll look at the concepts of sowing. So we touched on some few bits. I'm sure Pastor Chris mentioned one of the uh, scriptures which we're going to, we're just going to sail through quickly just to recap for the benefit of those who are not there. But I will learn not to be recapping because we are all supposed to be. We should be gathering in the name of the Lord Jesus, and it continues. So when we leave here, we go here. So, okay, Psalm 126, if you can put it on the board quickly, f- 5 to 6, we'll sail through that quickly, and then we will come back to what we should be doing. They the sow in tears shall reap in joy. I'm not going to elaborate too much. As far as the Spirit leads me, that's what I'll say. Is that five? And six says what? He that go forth and the whip, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtlessly come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheep with him. It's as simple as that. When you sow, no matter the state in which you sow, it said whoever you sow weeping, you will reap rejoicing. I asked you a question last time. So when you sow rejoicing, that means your, your reaping will be magnificent. Because he used the word to describe the worst state you could be to sow. So if you are in the best place to sow, what would it be the benefit then? You answer that to yourself. 
We won't dwell there too much. Ecclesiastes 11.6. We we'll touch on some few things and quickly we go back to where we should be today. 11 6. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 6. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thy hand, for thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. You know, that kind of thing when. People are doing what they are doing. Look, investors are continuing to invest in different companies. In different companies. And if the Lord is giving you at every gathering that there is in, uh, the, he's, he's, a, he's come in that state to say we should sow or we should challenge him with our givings, our substance. He said, last Sunday I did. Wednesday I did. And why are you still asking me? He said, look, when you do it in the morning, by evening time, don't withhold your hand. At every opportunity, sow. That's all he's saying. Let's go back a, 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 a bit on that one. Right. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with the child. Who knows how it's done? No, who here? Anybody? Not even the doctors. They don't even know the second, the microsecond, the, the time that even the egg is fertilized. This is why they tell you that in two weeks, you know, the, the second week of the week, yeah, you are in that week. They can't be precise. These are some of the things that are hidden from the world, which is actually giving us the reason to know there's something beyond science. We doctor can tell you that on the day of ovulation, it was 1600, 200 microseconds that you got pregnant. He should be able to tell you that in December, 1700, 200 seconds you give birth. He can't. And this is what he's saying. That you don't know the weight of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with a child. Even so, thou knowest not the works of God who make it all. So if, he, if you don't know his ways and he's telling you so, cast your bread onto the waters and in many days you will find it. You will question it. I will, I will cite out some few things for you. Leave it there. Hey guy, or Haggai. What did we say we are going to call it? Haggai. Okay, we agree, we'll call it Haggai. All right. See, though, so you were not here. So you, 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 you're wondering what's that. Because there was issues of, hey, guy, this and this. And so we agree, we'll call it Haggai. Okay, so believers love what if we call it Haggai. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's go to Haggai. <laughs> Chapter 1. <laughs> Glory to God. Chapter 1. Beautiful. I like the way my brother is smiling. You are very excited. That's good. It's good to be excited in the Lord. Um, yes, where is it? Shall we, please? Um. Right. We're talking plenty, talking plenty about this and this and that. I'm not going to go in that, 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 all that. Let's go to two. The house speaker of the Lord. You know, there was a time they were waiting. They, they were supposed to build for the Lord. And then they, were, they built their own house. They were living in it and all these things. And they said it's not yet time to build for the Lord. Okay. So let's jump down. Okay, let's take it from here. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say, The time is not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Let's go. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your own sealed houses? And these houses lay waste. Let's leave it there for now. No, people, when you begin to size and measure, when I have this, I'll do this for the Lord. When I have this, you are enjoying the benefits of his blessing already. By whose power you are actually having what you're having. But you are actually putting him second. And then we ask, by the Spirit, we said, who is first? Before the foundation of the earth, the Lord is there. He created the world. So why are you setting him second to everything that you do? All right, so he questioned. He said, no, 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 these people, you can't continue that way. So he sent the prophet and he questioned them. Now, let's jump and go straight to 6. You can read the, re the whole thing. It's beautiful. What is going on there? Let's go to 6. Let's go to 6. Because I've got, we got to do what we have to do today. Right. So after talking to them, and then the prophet went on to tell them what is going on with them. For lack of recognizing God first, this is what is happening to them. You have sown. I'm not reading it in uh, uh, James the King's version. Ye, ye, ye. You have sown much. 
You know that thing? When people say hard work, hard work. You're doing all you can, but the turnover is like, what is going on here? That sort of thing. You have so much and drink in little. That's it, as simple as that. When you disregard the Lord, we should be honest with ourselves. I'm 38 years now. I should be begin to take account and say, it is true, Father. I've not involved you many times. You see, this is why I should have been here, but look at where I am. You should be telling yourself those things. He say, look, you have been sowing much. The question is, where are they sowing? Is it in the Lord? In the things of the Lord? Because he said they are sowing. Because it's the month of sowing. People because they are sowing. They sowed, they were sowing. So what's the problem? Where are you sowing? Jesus even cited the example of the different lands on which when the word comes that it falls. So you have to be wise to choose the ground that will flourish your seed. So these people were sowing. Glory to God. You clothed, but there is none worn. And he that earned wages, and wages to put into a bag with holes. That's a big one. So working has been there since the time in memorial. They said they've been working. They are wages because you get wages from the work you do. You see, when they say hand to mouth, that's exactly what he's saying. <laughs> you take it. No, these things are to teach us to live right with the word because there is benefit for us. He said, look, you work. You earn wages. But you put it into a bag with holes in it. <laughs> to even know that there are holes alone, that's the beginning for you to seal it. You don't even know it. You don't know it. Glory to God. I'm not going to talk too much. It's obvious there. Let's leave it as the scripture is. I'm not going to garnish it. Put it into a bag of holes. I pray we don't put our wages in a bag of holes. Because we will live by the wisdom of God. We will live by the word of God. We will live by the, by the standards of God. And that puts us above the world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now. Before we go to today, let's look at Matthew 13, verse 37. There are a few more things that we can talk on these things, but it is well. Matthew 13. He answered and said unto them, He the sword the good seed is the son of man. Now, I've picked on the seed portion of it. So there is bad seed. There is good seed. What seed do you have? Who is the measure to say this seed is good or bad? That's another question. Is it you, God, or the word of God? And God is his word, so the word of God. He said, he that soweth the good seed. He was talking in a different dimension as to that matter. But I'm just speaking on the seed is seed. I'm hopeful that by Wednesday we should finish this and Sunday we'll look at the types of seed. Seed is seed. He's talking about a different seed here. But seed is seed. The principles of seed is the same. Be spiritual, physical. It is the same. Seeds are meant to produce results. Seeds, they actually flourish and produce after its kind in, in folds. Depending on how much you put in there. Okay? And then, so in the spiritual realm it happens. In the physical it does happen. So this is why I picked on that. Good seed. Good seed. Let's leave it there. We'll find out at the end of the day where we, are, we have to be. And sometimes you get excited with the word of God. And then you begin to skip. The spirit begins to minister other things to you. Then you begin to speak it for but I pray I'll stick to what is going to happen here. Because uh, today is, is, is glory to God. Now, let's look at some things. I will read some stuff out. And then we quickly go to read some scriptures. In the principles of sowing, 
seed, what have you? You should know what you want before you sow. There's no way you want a mango and you go sowing an orange seed. Uh -uh. It's not going to produce. No matter what you do, it will not produce. So first thing, you know what you want. That will move you to sow of its kind of seed. You understand? That will give you the value. When pastor is saying, who, who gives value for your car? You can buy 5000 and you are valuing it like it's a 20000 car. You clean it every day. You wash it. You clean it side. Like, just like somebody who is driving his Bentley. You understand? So the value is, is, is in relation to the subject. Not how much you pay for it. And it's true. You understand? Someone goes and buys something five pounds and he, he, he so cherished it. As much as somebody who pay 100000 So value is of the subject, not how much. It's of the subject. The challenge is when we begin to compare and contrast ourselves with people, then the, the, the concept of value is lost. Because you're looking at your friend. Hey, what value do you give to what you have? Not what your friend thinks about what you have. What value do you give to what you have? Glory to God. So first thing, know what you want. And that will propel you in the direction of what you should sow. Next thing is, you have to let go. And something put a seed in the ground, nothing is going to happen. Second thing is, you let go. Sow it. Into the right soil. And this time we're talking about the church. We're talking about the gathering of the children of God. That's the second thing. Be expectant. If you're not expecting, then don't sow. Many are the children of God who have sown over the years and still yet to harvest or reap their sowing. Because they are not expectant. They are not conscious of it. They are not even aware. Last Wednesday we asked, who among you can tell the last time I saw a seed because I wanted a school fees for my son. I saw it on the 25th of April 1955 and then it was 1600. You were so specific like that. How many? That should tell you, you are not really expecting. You are only because the pastor said we should give. So I give anyway. Eh? Pastor said we should give. When you are like that, how will you get it? You are, your, your, your post alone tells that you are not expecting. Pastor said we should give. Every day he comes, give, give, give. And I give so that I will have a peace in my mind. <laughs> okay, you are not about to harvest. The Lord has received and is wondering, when will my daughter or son wake up to the truth that I have a harvest for him or her? Be expectant. We talked about the farmers. You go by the countryside. You see how much effort they put into it. Because they are expectant. They have confidence and belief in the seed they have put down there. They do all sorts of things. They build scarecrows. They come early in the morning to chase the best away. So they don't remove the seed. What do you do after you sow? Even when you come to that and they say we should have sold. Okay, good. Now that you have sold. Reluctantly. Because you say he that goes weeping. So it doesn't matter you have sown reluctantly. Now you have sown, it's gone. What should you do? Begin to think about it. Zoom in on it. Remember it. The Lord said we should bring to his remembrance. When was the last time you go to the Lord and say, Father, last time I sowed this seed, I'm still expecting. We see the way David talks to the Lord. He has conversation with him. Glory to God. They will do all sorts of things. These farmers... Because they have confidence in this earthly seed. How much more the seed into the kingdom of God. The most fertile ground ever is the kingdom of God. There is no lack in there. There is no drought in the kingdom of God. Seasons is 24-7. That is why it says seed time and harvest time shall not cease. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. So long as the earth lives or continues... Snow, this and that and that. He said, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. So why is it ceasing in your life? You are the reason. Next thing is, you protect it. You protect your seed. How? You sow seed, now you go and begin to speak like any other person on the street. Things are hard, though. Eh? Things are difficult. Recession everywhere. You will fall into recession. Recession will be your name. You are not protecting it. These guys don't go and sow in their farms and go and sleep and leave it exposed to the birds to remove as much seed they want. The way you negate your seed or destroy, you, are, you, you look, you are the architect of your own seed. When you sow, now you begin to speak contrary. When you should be taking account, Father, 
I saw this seed for this. I'm still expecting a father. But last time, I said something contrary to this. Forgive me. And we draw it. Because as children of God, we have the capacity, the authority to change things on the go. So you have to be aware. Many are not even aware. That's why they are even speaking and canceling out their own seed. And they are questioning the pastor. They are questioning the church. They are questioning God. They are questioning the word of God. When you are the one that is actually crucifying your own seed. By the way you speak. Understand the currency in the kingdom of God is what? Words. It's words. So when you do the things which are sacred to the Lord, and you go around and you're speaking contrary, it doesn't matter whether you're conscious or not conscious. We are aware the courts of the principle are in motion. So it will... Death and life are in the power of the thing. You have to be aware. You don't sow and go and sleep. You pray. We'll find out. We'll find out about types of seeds. When Elijah spoke for seeds of saying it will not rain, he went to pray. When he said rain is going to come, he went to pray. He garnished his seed. He flourished it. He kept on banging it to the throne room and said, Father, this word will not drop to the ground. I have spoken it. You said, yes, the word that I speak for shall not. Except they have fulfilled the purpose for which. He is bringing the Lord to remembrance why his word should manifest. And again, he said that the things we bind on earth are bound in heaven. We lose them, they are losing in heaven. So you sow seed, and then you go around, jungling, jangling around, speaking anyhow, canceling it. It's worthy of everything in heaven. Because he said, when you bind it, it will be banned. When you lose it, it will be losing. So now that you are losing your own seed, okay, thank you. God bless you. Don't turn around and say, Father, why? You are the reason. Next one. Be ready. How ready are you? We'll find out in the scriptures. What Jesus said, when, it is, when, when the, 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 the seeds grow, the man took his sickles and go and harvest. Are you ready? Some are not even ready. How ready are you? You sow seed and they are going to give you, Pastor Chris said it, that one of the greatest things that will happen to you is when you lack ideas. Just there. Nothing happens to you. You are blessed with ideas, but we are not actually executing them. We are not. Be ready. Be ready to harvest it. Be convinced. Your seed may cost you. In the principles of sowing, your seed may cost you. I'm not saying it will always cost you. It may, depending on the value of what is at stake. You may sow five pounds for something. But there are certain things you said. I remember when Reverend Ray said, he has gone to pack all his suits in his wardrobe. He packed all of them out. Because of what he was expecting. And gave it all out. Can you do that? Hey, what am I going to wear to work? Hey, I'm particular about my dress, you know. Hey, father. Hey. Be particular about your dresses. <laughs> and stay with them. <laughs> Three years will pass, you will not even re- renew your wardrobe. But after he did that, ask how frequently he renews his wardrobe. He, he said he hasn't even asked. People bring shoes from all over the place. But that wasn't the reason why he sold that. But I- I- even that alone is producing results. We can learn to question all we want. But the word of God is what it is. You accept it, it works for you. And on that one to say, your seed may cost you. We'll go and read something in 2 Kings. I'll be recapping and be re- I'll be linking you back to what I have said here. Okay? Now, no seed is too small. Or too little or too big to sow. Even the smallest seed, mustard seed, is sown. And it has produced tremendous, excellent result. So you value your seed. Don't play down on your seed. If that's what you have that moment, sow it. For whatever desire. If you think you don't have a need in your life, you don't desire anything, sow. You had a special seed and the seed sown. For desired results, special seed, seed you sow that something should be happening for someone. You can sow seed on behalf of someone. Okay? So, you know, we receive Christ not only for us, but for others. Because once you receive Christ, you have become a kingdom person. Yeah? You will not enjoy it. But we are now actually taking the word back to people so they can also come and enjoy it. Are, are you getting the whole thing? So, in that state, if you think everything is fine with me, eh? I've never missed my rent. I've never missed this. Everything is fine. I don't, run, I don't manage my fuel on, uh, on reserve. 
It's always full, full tank. Everything this, everything that, everything that. What are, it's all about you. All about you. Everything is. Why, why would you think? Look aside and say, "That sister, it's been a while now. I've not seen her change her shoe. Let me buy her shoe." You can sow things into people's life. Last time Pastor Chris said it, it was part of our prayer. If you've been following the prayer, you would have seen this. It was last week. He said, if you want to sow something, and you want something, and you want to sow bigger, and what you have at the moment is not that. He said, you can sow it to somebody's life. Just make God be aware that I'm sowing this into this life for this. And then you get it, you bring it to the house of God. You, I mean, there's, there's avenue in the Lord. Don't ask how. In the principles of sowing and reaping, don't ask how. That natural farmer didn't ask, how is this small seed? He just puts it and comes guiding it, chasing the best away, doing all he would. He's not asking how is it going to come out. Don't ask how. So, in proportion to your faith, if you can manage two acre plot, you've gone to <laughs> take a 10 acre plot, there's only one thing that is going to happen. You cannot plow the whole place. You cannot process it all. You can't sow it all so it will grow. Weeds will grow anyway. Natural principle, they'll grow and then things will come encroaching. They'll even encourage animals to come. So just sow in proportion to your faith. And you know your faith. You know what you can take. And if the Lord is challenging you to grow your faith, do it. I have not sown 5,000 before. Hey! But I can hear 5,000 in my head. Do it if it's there. Do it and see what happens. Do it anyway. Everybody questioning these principles of God and all these things. One thing I keep asking is that no one has been able to stop death. And the doctors are not even planning how to. They say we, we, we <laughs> they'll tell you that they, they are preserving life. Which life have they preserved so far? In the face of the most sophisticated equipment, people die. That should tell you the limitation of science. In the face of the most sophisticated equipment, what have you? They say we can't find anything, but the person is sick and he's dying. What is the answer to that one? Life is spiritual. And we have a CD on that. Go get it. Life is spiritual. And listen. Now, Let's read John 12, 24. Quickly, we will run. We've got 30 minutes to finish. So, we are, we, we are happy with some of these things, yeah? We may not be happy with all of them. It doesn't matter. All that it is is fueled by the Spirit of God. <laughs> you can question it all you want. You will be the one that <laughs> it will be of detriment to you. <coughs> Verily I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abided alone. But if it died, it bringeth forth much fruit. If you're holding on to that corn, this is the last one I have. Probably that corn cob has about, God knows, 50 pieces of maize on it. If you put all those 50 seeds, you know how many you're going to get? But you're holding on to that corn cob. That's the last one. Except you allow it to die. And that brings us to the, you have to let go. You have to let go. You don't let go, it won't happen. It won't happen. It's not going to happen. You have to let go. And let it go to the right place. Not just let go anyhow. Let it go where it ought to be. Let go. Sow in the right land. And we have found out the greatest place to sow is in the kingdom of God. Because it has both physical and spiritual benefits. It has value in the next life to come. Many other things we see has no value in the next life to come. Thank you. Glory to God. There's a harvest coming your way. Open your eyes. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> See, there's beauty in the house of God. Is <laughs> No, it's good. 
That means he's expecting. He, he see, it's a good thing. He wants it. You understand? We look in this, it's in the scriptures that you can pray to these things. He said we should seek, we should fight for all these spiritual things. Some people have it. Some people are called. But you can nature yourself to become a, 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 a man of God or to uh, participate of some of the offices. You can desire it. So, yes, when he dropped the thing here, that was the first thing that was dropped in my spirit. And then I started smiling because it's a good thing. This is why I smiled before I said it to him. But he wanted Receive it in Jesus' name. As you desire, so it is in the name of the Lord Jesus. There is no, you see, the kingdom is not short of what to give. The fact that he has given this man doesn't mean he can't give him. He can give anyone. All you want is to ask. He will give you. Glory to God. There's no point we are fighting each other anyway in the Lord. Because there's too much to share. We cannot even exhaust it. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. <laughs> it's beautiful. Today is heavy. <laughs> okay, I will not say it. Oh, forgive me, Father. <laughs> glory to God. Mark four twenty three. Ah, oh, glory. It's getting interesting today. Mark four twenty three. If it comes back again, I will say it. Mark four twenty three to thirty two. Ah, right there. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. So <laughs> not all of them, all of us that have ear are hearing, eh? <laughs> you agree with me? Even if you don't agree with me, it's scriptural. And we have come to agree that whatever is scriptural is true and is real. So we better agree with it and begin to say, Father, how, how have I been listening? Jesus again said that be careful what you hear and how you hear as well. You, have you ever said something to someone? The person comes by next time and says, But that's what I heard. You said this to me. I said, no, that's not what I told you. They had totally different thing. And you're wondering, seriously? No, I didn't say that to you. Yeah, Jesus said it already. Be careful how you hear and what you hear. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Next one. Let's just. <laughs> and he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear with what measure you met it shall be measured to you and unto you that years unto you and, sorry and unto you that years shall more be given go on for he that has to him shall be given and he that has not from him shall be taken even that which he has what is it saying but he said he that has not they shall be taken but he said he doesn't have what is he trying to say? If the guy has nothing, what is it that they are taking from him again? No, he said, to him that has, they'll give him. You'll be giving more, okay? From him, and he that has not, from him shall be taken even that which he has. How? How? He said, you, you have to the guy that he has, but he to, the one that he has, he will be taken from him. See, there are things that we have that are in us. That have, you see, man is conscious of the physical having. Okay? So once we don't see, we think we don't have it. He's telling you, what you are endowed with, if you continue speaking, I don't have, I don't have, that which is in you yet to manifest will be taken away from you. And that's what Pastor Chris is saying. That the worst position to be is to be lack of ideas to create. Because this, if you bring this to the physical, the guy has nothing. What am I taking from him? He's talking about what the guy is endowed with. Innermost. What he's yet to bring out. For he, he's speaking the physical language of saying, I don't have. I don't have. I don't have. What is in you that should be coming out? That even will be taken away from you. Be not in that state where the things that are greater than even what you think are taken away from you. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. I'll jump to look at your seed may cost you. Second Kings chapter 3. We'll read from 26. Your seed may cost you. Your seed, but if it does cost you that way, you know it has cost you. You keep your eyes on the ball. 
and the harvest is beautiful. It, and when the king of Moab, you know, Israelites went to fight with these people. And the fight was so fierce, okay? They've done all they can, but it was just getting brutal. And when the king of Moab, you can read the whole thing, saw that the battle was too sore for him. He was getting to a state where he said, Kaveh Rosuta, hey, our strength cannot take us anymore. Even this guy is not a child of God. But he's, he's playing the kingdom principles against God's people. How many times has the world not played? The world played the principles against us. And we are at disadvantage. Be wise. This guy is not. He, he's fighting Israelites. The blessed of the Lord. But he is using the kingdom. You will see what happened. We will find out what happened in a minute. And many times this happened to us. We are in this world, but we are not of the world. And we allow the world to use the kingdom principles to deprive us of what is exclusively our preserving Christ. <laughs> so that the battle was too sore for him. He took with him 700 men that drew swords to break through even unto the king of Edom. But they could not. They were still moving. Next. Then he took his eldest son. That should have reigned in his stead. Let's stop there. That means the man has other sons. He did not take the younger one. He did not take the middle one. But the one that is to take the throne. That's how valuable that guy is. What is the value of your seed? He took his eldest son, and the scripture is precise. That should have reigned. He is the one to reign. That should have reigned in his stead when he's gone. And offered him for a burnt offering unto the wall. That's how far that man, that's how far the winning of the battle meant to him. Because if he lost the battle, there's no kingdom anyway for that guy to inherit. I will sacrifice him so the kingdom will remain for his brothers to take. He offered him for a burnt offering unto the world. And there was a great indignation against Israel. Stop there. Do you think God was against Israel? No. The principle is already there. The guy has fulfilled the principle. He said he's God. He changes not. God is not doing anything new. Are you with me? He has set both physical and spiritual courts in motion. You fulfill it. This is why he said he blesses both the righteous and unrighteous. Not that he's blessing them now. If God should be blessing us on the go, many will not be blessed. Because they are not working in line with his principles. Because they don't even recognize him in their lives. But he has done it all already. But the only thing is, Children of God has yet the next life coming. They can look to be enjoying, but they don't have the next life coming. And there was great indignation against Israel. And they departed from him and returned to their own land. They couldn't win. They left. They have to leave. What are you ready to do for that desire that you want? How much does it mean to you? Will tell how much you will put on it. <laughs> and I'm not going to give this example. <laughs> Even those in the world that gamble, how much they value, the more they put in. And actually, they're even obvious they're going to lose, but anyway, they, they put it on. They bet their last on it. They'll tell you that's my last, I'm putting it in. The guy still have confidence. He came with the Lord and he was alive with one cubo. <laughs> he dropped it in. All right, but this one we are assured of that so long as the heavens remain, so long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. So, what is your challenge? This is how far this man can go. It may cost you, but it will benefit you in tremendous folds, in folds for generations to come. Do you know what this man has done for his generation? Do you know what it would be if they have lost? They'll become slaves. 
Let's leave it there. That's a big one. How much are you ready to throw in? Beautiful. So you see, it may cost you. Glory to God. Before we read something in New Testament, because people are saying, say, oh yeah, we are all listening in the Old Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament. Okay. Let's look at Elijah. First Kings chapter 17. And now I want to try to read. I want us to go to 16, but we will start from 1. Quickly. I, I'm not in a rush to finish this, you see. Let's get this thing. Let's get these things in. Let's soak it in. All right. And Elijah, the Tishbite, who was at the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord of God Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain this year but according to my word i'm not thinking about that let's continue i'm just giving you preambles to what has transpired and the word of the lord came unto him saying get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before jordan because of what you are spoken the land has become dry the lord is now give provide see look the guy has stopped rain but the Lord is still leading him to where he can get food and water to drink. He, by his own accord, has stopped rain. But the Lord is not angry with him. Because the glory of the Lord is being shown. He, because he didn't say of himself. He said, so long as. He said, for his name's sake. Is that what we read in the scriptures? Not for your sake. Not because of your desire, how beautiful it is. Not because of what you will do with what you want and when you have it. But because of the name of the Lord. His name's sick. He does what he does. Get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself to the brook Cherith. That is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Birds are feeding this man. So what do you think is too difficult for the Lord? That even brings me another thing. This is when the Lord calls you to do something you are doing. He can even, Pastor Chris said, even he can turn stones to do whatever. It is just, it, he just wants us to partake of his glory. This is why he's bringing us into his fold. This is why he loves us to do things for him. This is why he wants us to manifest. He wants his glory to manifest in us. Not in stones. Not in animals. What spoke to, uh, uh, when, 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 uh, uh, what do you call it? Did donkey not speak to uh, 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 one of the prophets? What can the Lord not do? What is it that he cannot do? And it shall be that thou shalt drink the brook. And have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the Lord. He did according, not any left or right. Father, let me twist it a little bit. Father, what about this? What about that? He just went straight and did what he was asked to do. Will you? For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, and that is before Judah. And the ravens brought him bread. Where did they get it from? Bread. They didn't say fruits. They would say, oh yeah, probably the best. You know how critical people are. Oh, probably the best when eating and some left and they dropped it. And that's what they normally eat. So he just find when he dropped the pigs. They say bread. The raven doesn't bake bread. Ask me. No, no, no. Come on. You know, you see, God is very careful how he knows our mind. He created us. He knows what we would have said. Ah, oh, this bed, that's where they normally eat. So Elijah just found himself where whenever they, they drop, he collect and eat. No, the guys were bringing him bread. They didn't even eat it. They brought him. They didn't say leftovers. <laughs> Glory to God. So what is it that the Lord can give you? You able body. This is why Jesus was sizing us to the lilies of the valley. That if the Lord can clothe them in that nature. How much more we who have values more than flowers. What is it that he cannot do for us? And if he's telling you to sow. Throw. He said cast your bread onto the waters. In many days you will find them. And we ask. The waters. Look at it. The waters they encompass the whole world. 
But if this is how we, we, and you will still find it. Look at the irony of it. How much more in the Lord, when you cast your, your, your bread into the Lord, where it is specific, we are told of what it will be. No, you see, sometimes I look at these examples and the things that happen in the scriptures and I realize it is so high for us to believe these our little demands are possible. Because casting bread onto the waters, let's think naturally. Let's think literally as he's saying. We know that's not it. The bread will even get, it will just melt off in the water. Have you put bread in the water before? It will just dissolve. How are you going to find it? No, let's think on it. When we read the scripture, we come to things like, let's stop. The bread will dissolve. But he said, you will find it in many days. If there's assurance that when you cast bread into the waters, in the Lord, you will find it. How much more cast it into himself? Hmm. So he went and did according as the word of the Lord. And dwell by the brook Cherith. And the raven brought him bread <laughs> and flesh in the morning. Ah, there was meat too. <laughs> Birds don't hunt. Not to talk of cooking it. That is ready to be eaten. Mm. Okay. Okay. Let's think on it. And the ravens brought him, <laughs> brought him bread. And flesh in the morning. And bread and flesh in the evening. Ah, he doesn't even miss one. He has morning version. He has afternoon version. Ah, go Tarista. See how the Lord cares for us. There was evening section. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. Because there had been no rain in the land. Okay, now this is where I want us to go. I'm not going to dwell there too long. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Arise, get thee to Zerapah, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. A widow woman, he has commanded. Actually, is the widow away? But the Lord said he has commanded her. This is it. That sometimes you are doing something. He has commanded you. He is in you. He he said, look, he is the God of all flesh. So what is it that he cannot do? The widow, even if the widow was aware, she wouldn't have been complaining. Because most of us know this story. She wouldn't have been complaining and say, ah, this is all that we have. We're just going to eat and die. She would have said, yes, the father told me. I know something is going to happen. Many other times that because except the Lord naturally that woman will not release the bread. She will not. Because truly that was the last she had. But because of the spiritual promptings, she cannot kick against when the Lord speaks, except he hasn't. Have you heard the Lord lately? Has he spoken concerning a matter? Trust it to be. Arise, get thee to Zerapath, which belongeth to Zidon. And dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zerapath. And and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow was there gathering of sticks. That sometimes we are certain places at certain times. We thought it's by chance. Nothing is by chance. Why was the woman there at that time? Gathering sticks. She thought I've gone to gather sticks. To cook what? That last food. To, so she can put herself to bed. Nothing happens by chance. Nothing. Nothing. The trouble happening around, around the world is not by chance. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel and bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God delivered, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise, 
And behold, I am gathering two sticks, just two, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die after. She's expecting to die anyway. She, she was getting, she was having her last supper. <laughs> so she would go to join the father. And Elijah said unto her, fear not. How bold are we to speak to people say, fear not. Or tell yourself, fear not, Selassie. Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said. But make, you hear him? But make me thereof a little cake first. Again. First has come in because Elijah was representing God. It was under God's instruction. Except the woman does. He said, go and prepare it. You go ahead and prepare it, but give me some first. Did we talk about first earlier? Today, did you hear me talk about first? But he said, let me have a portion first. Will you do for the Lord first? And that woman was not even aware that the Lord has sent this guy. She was just being obedient. Sometimes it's just okay to obey. He said, bring it unto me. It's okay. A little cake first and bring it unto me. And after make for thee and thy son. The people were already hungry. You see, sometimes pity doesn't change anything. In the world, we are made to pity people. Pity changes nothing. It t- changes nothing. All right? Who say, ah, but this man, this hard man of God is heartless. These people are poor. That's their last food. Even if he's going to share it with them, why won't they? Why, why, why won't he let them eat first? He said, You give me first. And then you. We find ourselves in those situations. I say, the man of God is heartless. Why, 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 why? Can't you see the conditions of it? Change is coming. Now, and bring it unto me, and after make thee and for thy son. For thou shalt the Lord of the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain unto the earth. That thing that was the last one, she's going to take some and prepare for him. They will prepare for me. He said, that will not cease. Did he cease? <laughs> until the day the Lord sent and raid unto the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. According to the saying of Elijah. Hey, have I, have you, hey, except I heard of the Lord. Except I hear the Lord. I won't do it. But you didn't know what he has heard. And he's come speaking to you. I will do it. Hey, what kind of life is this? God will not ask me to do such a thing. Already I'm suffering. I'm struggling. This is my last plan. You're telling me to give it. Are you sure? You have heard from God that you shouldn't give it? Except you have heard from the Lord. Don't begin to put God there and say, hey, no, don't use him. You are doing your own thing. You are making your own judgment. You are setting your own standards. Glory to God. Glory. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he... And a household did eat many days, many days. And the barrel of the meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. So God didn't come to speak it. He speak it by Elijah. But it happened. It did happen. Just yield to the instructions of the Lord. Especially when someone stands to say, the Lord said. When David said, I come against you in the name of the Lord. Instantly, it wasn't David fighting anymore. The name is at stake. He said, for my name's sake. The name of the Lord was at stake. Dare to put the Lord in your matters. Dare to challenge yourself to put the Lord in your matters. Use the name of the Lord. And he has revealed himself that the name that is given unto us, Jesus Christ, given above all names, and when mentioned, every knee bows of things in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth. That at that name, every knee bows. What is it that is arising like a giant in your life? Use the name of the Lord Jesus. It will bow. It has never failed since the time of the foundation of the earth. 
it is still working now. Even as we are speaking now, people are laughing because of the name of Jesus. Even as we are speaking now, people are getting healed. Even as we are speaking right now, people are awakening to the truth of the fatherhood of God in their life because of the same name. Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And it will not fail you. I was going to Elisha. I'm not going there. We'll leave it. We'll continue on Wednesday. But let's read some in the next five minutes. 2 Corinthians 9. Glory to God. Elijah went because he was expecting. He was expecting. It may cost you. See, no seed is too small or little to sow. We will see when Jesus talked about um, the master seed. But in the case of the woman, was what she had too little to produce the result, the desired result? She was even sowing it unconsciously. And you are sowing it consciously. The woman was acting unconsciously. But the promptings of the Spirit of God, let's say she was actually falling in line with those things by grace. Because the scripture did not say, and God actually openly spoke to the woman. And the woman did not say anywhere that, I have heard the Lord said, I should. But the scripture said, the Lord has spoken to the woman. Revealed unto Elijah. It was a conversation between Elijah and God. But when he got there, everything played accordingly. So let's say the woman was acting in grace. The Lord has just decided. And Jesus even talked about this. That in the land, when they were farming, there were many, many widows, but this one was chosen. He talked about it. He was using as an example when he was talking about some parables. Where he was trying to question that he, 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 he's not come to preach unto everyone. That there were prophets in the land. We won't go there. Leave that one there. Let's, let's, let's just see. Do you have it on the board? 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6. But this I say. He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. You sow mega, little. You will reap. Eh? I don't know what language is that. I don't know. I don't know. But it has come forth so little like that. When you do like that, it will work. And then he which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. It's clear, is it? It's very clear. You know what is bountiful to you. You should be the measure. And you know you know. You know you know. Glory to God. Continue. Continue for me, please. Seven. Seven. Yeah, we'll continue to 10 anyway, so just to make you aware. We'll be running through to 10. Every man according as he purpose in his heart. Did I not say to you that let, be moved by your faith? Be connected with it. The faith connects to what you're doing. He said, whatsoever is not of faith, is sin. So if you are doing only because uh, brother uh, Dave comes here speaking, brother Slazi comes here speaking every time too much, let me do something. So he will see my name in the list of people giving, so he'll be satisfied. That is sin. Be moved by faith. Be moved by the words I speak that I believe these are the words of God. Therefore, I'm acting on the word of God. Don't please me. Because it won't bring you anything to please me. Please God. Because when you please God, you please me anyway. Because I stand here by the standards of God. So when you do the will of God, you are doing my will. Do you understand? So I don't have to fight you to do. If you recognize God in your life, you will do the word of God and then we will all be happy. So as you have purpose in your heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let's go, let's go quickly. Eight. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So don't say, hey, he's challenging for me. He said grace. He's able to make grace abound. For you to challenge yourself to give that thing you think you cannot give. That ye always have an all sufficiency in all things. So you are sufficient in all things. You are sufficient in seed. You are sufficient in harvest. So don't say I don't have. I can't do it. You are sufficient in all things. You lack nothing. That thing you are holding on to anyway. Who gave it to you? Where did you get it from? 
Who gave you? He said he gives you strength. Who gives you strength to make wealth? <laughs> always having all sufficiency. Always, not sometimes. Always. Let's be conscious of the words. Always. So you'll be conscious that I have always. And so it will be in your life. Always having all sufficiency in all things, not some things, all things may abound to every good work. Yes, nine. As it is written, he that despised abroad, he has given to the poor. Yeah? He, let me go back. As it is written, he has despised abroad, he has given to the poor. He his righteous remained forever. Ten. Now he that ministered seed to the sower. Both, this is where I want us to be, like I said to you, ten. Both ministers bread for your food. And multiply your seed sown. So you see, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So if he's the one that ministers seed unto you, why are you holding on to the seed? And when you sow it, he's the one that is going to multiply it. Why are you refusing to sow it? Why are you taking thought of how is it going to produce? How? How? We don't ask questions on these things. You don't have to ask. Except you don't believe. Except you are working yourself to the point of coming to acknowledge the standards of God. Beautiful. See, sowing investment is sowing. Do we agree? Because you put five pound and you're looking forward that in two, three years time I want 50 pound. It's sowing. But you are sowing into, which is okay. This is a cited example of when the, 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 the rich man gave uh, talents to three people. So there's no sin in investing. Okay? But we'll look at something in a minute. Okay? Because that is a worldly structure. That we are investing into. It's okay. It's beautiful. It's fine. Alright. So you sow. And you are looking forward to the, the company manager. All the people who matters. For the company to do well. So the, 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 the shares will increase. You believe in them. And you cannot believe in the God of all flesh. That is even giving wisdom to that man. Look. If you come to acknowledge your position. For you investing in that company. The company. The manager will become wiser than before. Because of you. The Lord have to protect your seed in that company. Did he not talk about uh, uh, what you call him? Bring it to my remembrance. Holy Spirit of God. Joseph. Look, Potiphar was not blessed because he said because of Joseph. So sometimes we should be conscious of what we carry. That because I'm investing in this company, they will do well. I am the reason. They have to do well. They have to do well. And they will do well. The manager all of a sudden becomes aware of what to, where, what to do so the company will flourish. But we say, we just, uh, we, you, you yourself, you're actually questioning that company. You have finished investing in them. Say, ah, 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 these people. Ah. Every time you're complaining and the seed is going down. Your seed is going down because of your, and actually as a child of God, your words carry weight. Any other person could be saying those things and nothing will happen. But because of the weight you carry, your words is actually negating. The manager is making error. They are removing. They bring another chief executive. It's worse because you have not changed your talk. You destroy your own seed. You realize, ah, I invest 50 pounds. Now it's 25 pounds. God, what is it? Then you meet your friend. I don't know what is wrong with those companies. Eh? My shares has gone down. That manager, you are the reason. You are. You are the reason. He said you have all sufficiency in all things. That means in words as well. In words as well. Glory to God. Learn to speak right wherever you sow. Protect it. Guide it. Speak forth. That no matter how questionable the man is, he's in position and you have invested there, then you begin to speak and the man is just making decisions and the things are just moving, are just moving, are just moving. Glory to God. But that is in the worldly investment. Because Jesus talked about storing up treasures on earth where moths and rats shall eat it up and store it in heaven. It's okay to invest. So if we have that confidence in the worldly structures to invest for increase, how much more the heavenly? Where Jesus said there's no moths and rats 
They are stored for you to enjoy now and also the life to come. Make that decision yourself. You want to see that? Luke 12 from 21. You can see things like that. Matthew 6, 19. You can see I'm not reading it. Matthew 6, 25, please. Let's read something quickly and we'll be praying in a minute. And I dare you to challenge the Lord. To sow. I said, I will start sowing. He said, we look at it last time. He that looks at the clouds will not do what? Will not sow. He said the wind. He that looks at the wind shall not sow. But he that looks at the cloud will not harvest either. Okay? So you're there and say, hey, I came with only five pounds today. This thing I've heard is true, but I'll start next week. You're looking at the, <laughs> you're looking at the wind. You're not moved yet. Eh? Because per adventure, this is why I said, take account of your sowings. Remember, remind yourself and remember the Lord. That I did. I walked out, a friend called me and said, ah, no, the, do you know I owe you 50 pounds? I said, which 50 pounds? You have forgotten. I've prayed to your account. Another person called you and said, oh, uh, your birthday pass, I didn't give you anything, no. Hey, I just got something, I want to give you 500. Remember, if you, and be, thank you, Father, my seed is producing. The more you begin to rejoice, my seed is producing results. The more the seed will be multiplying. But you saw, now you saw you are going, Brother Dave, hmm. hey, this guy, hmm. hey, hey, how am I going to buy fuel now? I have to go to work the whole week, hey, hmm. hey, hey, hmm. even, even today, even today, the food, actually I was trying to go and have a chicken and chips, five pounds, four ninety nine. I will even have one P change, see you. See you. You are not expecting. <laughs> you are not expecting that state. No, that's not the voice of someone who is expecting. Eh? No, no, tell me, is that the voice? Of... <laughs> no. You are counting your woes when you should be rejoicing for what you have done. Ah, my kitty, Sunda. <laughs> Where are we? Are we there? We should be wrapping up in a minute. Beautiful, glorious things are spoken of us. Oh, Jesus, this Lord. Therefore, I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not life more than meat and the body more than remnant? Let's go. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into their bands. Yet your heavenly Father. He calls it your heavenly father. No, he didn't say my. He has, this time he said your heavenly father. Feed them. Are you not much more than they? Simple talk. Jesus is asking. Let's go to 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Go to the next one and hold it there. It's a long one, but we'll stop somewhere because my time. Hold it there. So which of you on taking thoughts of those things can change anything? No. So why are you doing it anyway? This is the thing. Whilst you are going complaining and contemplating chicken and chips and all those things, it's not, <laughs> it's not going to change anyway. Do you understand? The only thing that will change is the way you speak henceforth in line with the seed you have sown. Are you getting it? Because he has already said it. And why take ye thoughts? Why take ye thoughts? For remnant, consider the lilies of the, valley, uh, of the field, how they grow. They toil not. Neither do they spin. He said they don't toil. But they are flourished in their own array. Continue. You can read that up to 30, but we will continue from there on Wednesday. Because there are a few more. We'll look at what happened in Elisha. In line with what is going on now. And then we'll read again. This. this is, when the king of Moab did what he did. It cost him something. But he had what he want. Let's look at David. 2 Samuel 24, 24. And we'll stop there. 2 Samuel 24, 24. Where he said he was going to sacrifice unto the Lord. 
and he said that he will not do anything unto the Lord that caused him nothing. But we already know David's position as far as God is concerned. He is the man after the Lord's heart. That's what he's described. And the king said unto Aaron, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. He knows something. He knows that when he calls him something, it, it, it actually exhibits his commitment. It actually exhibits his commitment, his confidence. Like Pastor Chris said this morning in the video, I wasn't here, I was outside, but I know that video. When he said that when you do these things, it is your commitment, your assurance, your affirmation in the things of God. David knows something. That when he calls him something, it's valued before the Lord. And that unbelieving king operated in the same principle. And things turn around all of a sudden. These people that were struggling to keep up with Israel... Just after the sacrifice, what happened? Israel have to run home. They have to run home. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. And do something you think is possible. Do something that you think is impossible for you to do. But the scripture already said, all things are possible. It sounds impossible to you, but it's possible. Neither will I offer burnt offering unto the Lord my God of that which does cost me nothing. There's a key in there. We only want to deal with God from our comfort zone when it's comfortable. Even coming to church when it's comfortable. If it's not comfortable, we will not not make time to say, I am taking time off because I want to be in church. Except, it's there, it's there, it's there. Oh, people, you think I'm here every other Sunday because I'm not supposed to be at work. Because I have arranged ahead to remove them. Wednesdays, I work mostly Wednesdays, but I've removed them all by booking holidays ahead. Because I have accepted the assignment. I have to do something. Because somebody says, oh, Brother Dave, you, your ship season, your ship pattern allows you. No, it doesn't allow me, but I have made way. I have made way. I have. I choose to. It, 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 it's individual. You have to come to that point where you say, look, I want to give the Lord something. I, I want to do something for the Lord. Last, Sunday, last Friday, I wasn't feeling well, so I didn't go to work. All right? But here I am. A child of God, sickness cannot put you down. I shake it off immediately. I wasn't feeling well. I can't work. I can't make it. But I'm feeling dizzy and all sort of funny things. I said, no, 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 no. I went to sleep. I wake up. I said, no, no, no. I know who I am. I'm not going to let this thing continue. I stopped it. I'm here. You can go and ask my company if I didn't call that I wasn't coming to work. Yes, I did. But I wasn't feeling well. Not feeling well is the problem. It's not the problem. What you do when you are not feeling well is the issue. Will you accept it? Will you keep it and nurse it? My sickness. This is my dizziness. This is my headache. You make it your own. Hey, this is my back pain. Of course it will remain. The Lord my God, that which does cost me nothing. Let's dare, dare to do something that costs us something for the Lord and see the benefit of it. So David bought the threshing floor and the auction for 50 shekels of silver. He's a king. He's entitled to take whatever he wants to take. But he said, I'll still pay. I'll pay because I know who I'm doing unto. Don't worry, I know you reverence me as a king. Don't worry, I am buying it. Because for who I am going to give, he made me the king. I cannot accept this thing freely from you and sacrifice unto him. It has to cost me something. And it did cost him something, some coins. I challenge you. I dare you to do something today that costs you something unto the Lord. And remember it. Glory to God. We will continue this. It's a month of sowing. We will continue to sow. We will continue to sow. We will sow today. We will sow the life to come. We will sow till the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. We can be on our feet as we pray unto the Lord. Maso Sundra Gibra. Thank you. Oh, Shatalaraba, speak unto the Lord. Challenge yourself. Cause yourself to accept the Lord. Cause yourself to do all that you are prompted to do. 
Will the Lord still build his church with or without your giving? He will. He wants you to partake of his divine nature. He wants you to be protected. He wants you to be covered. He wants you to be in his fold. Then the only way you can be in the fold of the Lord and participate of his divine nature is to do the things that he asks you to do. And this man, we are looking at a man of sowing and we're going to show and we saw our substance. We saw our words. We saw our thoughts. We speak words. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Is it that you're challenging? It's challenging for you to pay your tithe. Challenge yourself. Dare the Lord with it. He said, yes. He said, try me now in this. And see if I will not open the windows of heaven and bless you. That the devourer is actually rebuked for your sake as well. What is it that you are finding difficult or challenging to, to connect to? Yes, spiritual things are deep things. It takes your belief and your faith in the Lord to do them. And he said he has all things, all sufficiency. You have all sufficiency in the Lord to do whatsoever. Challenge yourself. Kere sopra handalanabaha. Le graso bonse deliatasada. Oh, Kadibro Sandi Gabarabo Solish Talem Rakisani. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, you're here. You said, oh, I'm not ready. I've not got it yet. You can pledge it. If for so long as you will redeem it, it is worth it. Because when you go plowing a land and you don't have the seed with you, it's like you are pledging. I will come and sow in it. There's no way that you will plow a land and leave it to grow. It's just like you are pledging. This land, I'm coming back with seeds. I'm going to sow them in you. And then when I sow, I will harvest. Plow the land today. Make a pledge unto the Lord. A pledge that you're going home and you say, Hey, Kedebasa. And you know it can only take the Lord for you to redeem it. That kind. Yes, that kind. And he is. For we have seen in his word. That what? He is the one that ministers seed unto the sower. So challenge him with your seed. Challenge him with your, your pledge. And he's more than willing to yield up. For the glory is his. <laughs> the glory is his. Oh, <laughs> In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God.